Hi guys, Alex here. Welcome back to Girl Talk. I've got a little bit of mess and a little bit of drama today for you guys. Welcome to Girl Talk episode 60. Yes, this is our 60th episode of Girl Talk and I am super excited. I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for supporting Girl Talk over the past year. We started it in the beginning of January of 2021 and it has just been doing so well and it has reinvigorated my love for YouTube. So thank you guys so much for supporting and let's just get right into it, shall we? Our first story comes from Pete's who spills the beans on where Foodie Beauty was the other night. Did she lie? And then we're going to talk about Foodie Beauty, who addresses the vegan for life situation. It's a mess. And lastly, we're going to talk about Amber Lynn Reed. Of course, she throws Becky under the bus. But what else is new? All that and more coming up on today's edition of Girl Talk. Let's just get right into it. I mean, shall we? All right, you guys, the first thing I want to talk about is kind of good, kind of Pete's. I mean, Pete's of my mind. He really has been the gift that just keeps on giving this Christmas season. And that was... <laughs> He exposed some of Foodie Beauty's lies during one of his recent live streams. Now, the live stream in question was called To Live Another Day. And during this live stream, people had some questions for Pete's. Did Foodie Beauty stay home that night? Because we reacted to her live stream from that night. And to tell you the truth, it was absolutely insufferable. But something stuck out to me. She just wasn't in the right headspace, if you know what I mean. Pete's reveals that after that live stream, she went over to his house. The guy I slept with have not fallen in love with. No. No. And I don't know why I fall in love with the ones I do. I swear. Okay, guys. Chantel is out. Now, we had speculated that this is what was totally going to happen, but of course, we don't know for sure. It was nice to get that confirmation from Pete's. We can only assume that she drove over there under the influence. But this wasn't the only lie that Pete's exposed. During a prior live stream, Foodie Beauty claimed that the house was mostly clean and that the only thing left to do was her room. But as Pete's gave us a tour of the downstairs under the guise of just checking out the cats, I see you, Pete's. We figured out quickly that that just wasn't true. Either Chantal is lying or this is what she considers mostly clean. To be honest, either of those could be true. But it's sad anyway to see those cats living in squalor. And just to see for yourself the wasted potential of that home. It could look so nice. Let's be real here. All right, you guys, moving along to the vegan for life situation, which of course involves foodie beauty. If you guys don't remember this drama, basically vegan for life donated a super chat for $200 to take BBJ to the vet. That's what the super chat said. And Chantal during that live stream accepted the super chat and said that she would do just that. People have been getting on Chantal because she talks about about how BBJ is constantly sick and yet she refuses to take the cat to the vet, basically claiming that she's too old and if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Ugh, that is just so sad. Like if that was my pet, that attitude, I just can't stand it. Anyways, Vegan for Life is not happy that Foodie Beauty took her money to do whatever she really felt like doing. Like I said before, if you donate to Foodie Beauty, you know where it's going to Natter. So if you're not comfortable with that, Vegan for Life had this to say. Why won't you take BBJ to the vet? She is sick, choking, coughing, puking, dull coat, losing weight, and you really don't care, do you? Somebody replied, did you get your money back? And Vegan for Life replied, no, but my bank, police, and hopefully YouTube will sort it out. I have emails from her asking how I want it refunded and enough of her chins wobbling saying I'm giving it back. Chantal is a loser and she will be unemployed definitely by this time next year. During today's live stream, Foodie Beauty actually responds to this, claiming yet again that she will never, ever refund Vegan for Life's money. But 
I'm not giving vegan for life her money back. So if you hate me for that, I don't care. She did not say when to take BBJ to the vets. She said this is for BBJ vets. So when I take BBJ to the vet, which by the way, what, hasn't even been like a month or has it been like a month since she sent the super chat? I will use it for that. Otherwise, like I said, if you send super chats, you don't have a right to demand what I do with it. Just accept that your money's lost if you send it. Um, I think it's non-refundable. And that's it. Too bad. Sorry. I don't feel bad, actually. Hi, Festering Filthy Beauty! A lot of people were like, I don't think you should give the money back. That's ridiculous that she's demanding. Like, you didn't say when to take BBJ to the vet. You just said for BBJ vet. Well, if you send me money, you guys have to realize it is going to whatever I want it to go to. So... What are your guys' thoughts on this situation? The bottom line is, it's foodie beauty. So what more did you expect? I do hope that she takes that cat to the vet, but we can't control her. And sending her super chats with specific intentions is just not going to work. Nobody can control our Canadian queen, except for maybe Natter. Shall I believe? All right, you guys, for this part of the video, I wanted to discuss Amber Lynn's latest upload, which is actually called Lying About My Weight Again. Let's talk episode five. The beginning of this video, she talks about how she was sick. She mentioned that on her community tab post, but we weren't sure what was wrong. Amber Lynn got tested for COVID and thank God it was negative, but she did have cellulitis and she claims that in the past couple of months, this is the second time that she got cellulitis. Do you guys remember in 2019, we just watched her vlogmas on my recent live stream and she had cellulitis then. It seems like her girl just can't catch a break. During the video, she talks about how New Boo has money and New Boo buys her gifts, something that she is not used to because none of her ex-partners used to buy her anything. Yikes. Subtle Amber. Listen to her describe her situation with New Boo. That I'm in a relationship with someone who has their own job they have their own money. They buy things for me. Like that is very new. Like that's no shade towards my exes, but that is like a very new concept that I'm not used to. I think that I give my partner love, unconditional love, kindness, loyalty. We laugh together. Not only are we lovers, but we're best friends. I feel like I give them like the stuff that I crave in a relationship. She clarifies where she is going with her channel by stating that there is no more schedule. She doesn't want to box herself in for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. She says that she has been in phase one for a few months now. She also clarifies the Christmas tree that went to Becky. That's why she bought a new one. And she also addresses her views, which I know a lot of people have been on her about claiming that her views are a lot less. They are, but Amberlynn claims that she makes plenty and that she is sitting pretty. She's still comfortable. I have to say, people are blowing this out of proportion. She still gets over a million views a month, which is comfortable. Trust me. She says that every time that she's on track, her views go down and that people just want to see a train wreck, but that's not her anymore. Take a look at this clip where Amber explains the traveling situation when it came to Becky and also throws what I would consider a bit of shade. But hey, she was just over there the other day, right? I want to know why you blamed Becky for not being able to travel, but now it seems like you blame your weight now. And Becky is out there living her best life and traveling all over Kentucky. She's traveling to her sister's backyard. <laughs> oh my God. I love Becky. I actually recently hung out with her. I hung out with her the day I got sick, which is crazy. But Becky knows she went through a big portion of our relationship where she did not want to travel it was due to anxiety and now she does want to travel and i think that's awesome i really have always told her there is more to this world than just your hometown all right you guys it's our favorite time of the day and that is of course comment of the day and today's comment comes in from yesterday's girl talk this comment is from autumn garner who says the following i think it's wild that becky was given 80,000 subscribers from her association with ALR and just screwed it up so bad. Like people work years to get that many subs. True. And she got in a matter of months by doing nothing. I get she doesn't want to overshare, but you got to give the audience a little something. 
about the relationship. A little nugget to feed the haters will be your best friend forever. (laughs) Now, I don't really want to dwell on this too much because we have uh, talked about it ad nauseum, but I just wanted to say that Pete's, I feel like, is doing the better job out of the two. He's giving the people what they want. You don't have to completely throw them under the bus, but just give us something. (laughs) All right, you guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What do you think about Pete's spilling some more beans? What do you think about Foodie Beauty and the whole vegan for life mess? Also, what do you think about Amber Lynn throwing a little bit of shade at Becky and addressing some questions? Honestly, that video wasn't as bad as her recent efforts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I will, of course, catch you guys in the the next one. Bye, guys. (laughs) 